So this morning we have a service call on a Delfield six drawer unit. The customer had uh, cleaned out the box before I arrived, so it was all nasty, they said, so that's cool. Um, first thing I did was check the temperature controller, which is right there. And it's turning both solenoid valves on and off. Next thing I did was pull this cover off right here. There was a filter on there, it's not too dirty, which is good. The condenser fan motor's running, but my compressor is not. Compressor's cold to touch. So, um, it looks like there's gonna be an issue in the starting components or and or the compressor. Uh, would it be off on low pressure because the condenser fan motor wouldn't be running? So we're calling, but the compressor is not turning on. That's our problem. So we're going to pull out the condensing unit and uh, dive into the electrical and see what's going on. So I'm starting to pull this out. And I think just blew sparks when I moved it. So I'm assuming that there's a problem in the... That's got the potential relay in it, the start capacitor, the run capacitor. It's just like a little module. I think this one brat. Blue sparks out the side, so I'm assuming that's where our problem is, but we're going to get it taken apart a little bit more and see if we can't dive into it. Okay. So what we've got here is a shorted out wire. Blew apart. It's interesting. We're going to figure that out. We'll repair that and see if the compressor will start back up. Looks like it completely melted the terminal off. Also looks like there's some water damage in there where it's been getting wet or something too. So we'll see. We'll check the start cap. So in order to test my start cap, we're pulling both the wires off of the relay. And then we're just going to test them with the thing. And we're, we should be, it's a 410. Uh, Eurofarad capacitor, so we're good on that. So I repaired the wire right here on this little blue one right here, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it started back up and see if this thing will run. Cool, turn the power switch back on, and she is running, compressor is at least. So I will still put some gauges on here to check the refrigerant pressures and then we're going to put the drawers back in, evaluate the whole system, watch it come down in temperature. And then I'm also going to pull this cover off the compressor terminals to make sure there's nothing going on in there. And at a minimum, I'll order this uh, module right here. It comes as one complete assembly. Uh, they're very hard to get, nobody stocks them locally. So as a precaution, we'll go ahead and replace that, but hopefully we can just get them running for now. Pretty good. Refrigerant pressures don't see anything jumping out at me, scaring me. This unit doesn't have a sight glass, it does have a receiver, so you have no way of checking the sight glass. So we're just going to kind of use a rule of thumb and say 25 to 30 degrees above ambient. I see no reason to have to adjust the charge, I haven't done anything yet. Um, we're coming down to temperature. The thermometer is reading the top temperature is the left side, the bottom temperature is the right side. So we'll just make sure that the temp control cuts it in and out where it should be. But so far we're looking good. I do want to make sure that those two temperatures get closer together to make sure that both coils are working. So we're going to watch it for a few more minutes, but nothing's jumping out at me. The manager did tell me that they had like a major blackout over the weekend. Uh, I guess that could have caused that electrical short, but to me it looked a little more like water damage. There is a TXV right up here for the cold rail. Uh, I've done work on a similar unit to this um, and I explained what happened here. They used to have a, a hard time maintaining the temperatures on the top cold rail and the bottom. The compressor controlled both and we actually pulled off the top cold rail and put a condensing unit on the roof. So the top is no longer connected to the condensing unit right here. So this condensing unit only runs the bottom section now. So that's why there's a temperature controller and then it's piped all the way upstairs. So, there's a little bit of a condensation that does leak down. I guess theoretically that could be the cause of our water. 
but I don't know. It just kind of looked like, and you see the little drips right there, so we'll see if we can't do something to solve that problem. Okay, so we're getting closer to temperature, but I'm not liking how the left side coils at 38, but the right side, this is return air temp, coils at 42. Another thing I'm noticing is my compressor superheat is two degrees. Mind you, that's compressor superheat. I honestly think that we have an expansion valve for the right side coil that is flooding. And that would explain why we would have two degrees compressor superheat. And that would also explain why one coil is working, one coil is not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this coil and investigate the sensing bolt for the expansion valve. So I've got the coil open and, and my theory is confirmed. Now we have to correct it and see if it'll get better. But this expansion valve sensing bulb is loose. I can move it around with my fingers. It's not tight. So I'm gonna get in there, pull that insulation off and retighten that sensing bulb and see if we can correct that superheat issue. So I've got the insulation off and look at some bozo used zip ties. And look at how loose that sensing bulb is on there. So I'm gonna get a strap and re-secure that properly. Let alone did they use zip ties, they have it strapped to a weld so it's not even making good contact. So we're gonna correct that right now. So you can see my super heat is much better now. And my box temperatures are much more even now too. So that expansion valve was definitely the problem as to why it was flooding. We're looking good, so we're just gonna watch this thing satisfy. You see my superheat is actually 28 degrees, which is much better now. And that's compressor superheat. All right, so to recap, we had a service call on a Delfield six drawer unit. The unit had an electrical short that originally caused uh, the compressor not to run properly, or not to run at all, I should say. So I temporarily repaired the electrical short, um, found that the unit also had uh, the sensing bulb for the right side evaporator coil's expansion valve was loose, which was causing extremely low superheat, which was also causing the uh, evaporator not to perform correctly. So we corrected the, the problem, we tightened up the sensing bulb, put a proper strap on it, insulated it like we should. Uh, the superheat came back up into line, both the coils started working properly. Uh, I ended up coming back about, I'd say, a week later, replacing the starting component assembly with, uh, it's that whole module, and cleaning up some of the wiring inside there. But the unit had been working fine and everything was going good, okay? So, um, you know, you can call this a multiple offender, um, you know, this is one of those ones where you can't just fix the starting component problem and walk away. I had to watch the box come down to temperature. I noticed that it wasn't performing correctly, went ahead and corrected the issue, and then got the entire unit going. Okay, so big picture. As I always say, always look at the big picture. I want to say thanks, guys, for watching my videos. I recently just hit 3,000 subscribers. I really appreciate that. You guys are all helping me to get that subscriber count up. Uh, obviously, I'd really appreciate you guys to continue to subscribe to my channel, share my channel with your friends, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what you like or what you don't like about my videos. Um, you know, give me suggestions on what you guys would like to see. I have gotten some suggestions and I am working on some. I do have to say that some of the specific suggestions, like someone asked me to make a video on a beverage air cooler. I don't work on very many beverage air coolers, so the moment that I work on one, sure, I'll make a video, but it's not something I can just pull out, you know. I tend to work on, you know, Delfields and Trues and Kyrak units, the majority of them, at least the reach-in coolers. So, um, but again, thank you guys very much, and we'll see you guys on the next one.